Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode. Today, we're gonna to talk about laptops. It's no secret that laptops are an essential part of a college student's everyday life. However, laptop prices are quite crazy nowadays, literally ranging from thousands to the three or four thousands. Actually quite insane. So in this video, we're gonna see if we can forego those costs. I'm going to upgrade an old 2008 MacBook into hopefully the specifications of a MacBook Pro 2020 and see if this MacBook from 12 years ago can be as powerful as a MacBook Pro in 2020. Alrighty, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so we're on the Apple website looking at MacBook Pro 2020s. You see right here, 1300, 1500, 1800. Don't let the 99 fool you. It's not 1400, it's 1500. All right, so let's look. We have an Intel Core, um, Core i5, 8th gen, turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. Can't do nothing about that because we can't, obviously we can't upgrade the CPU, but let's look at the RAM. The RAM's an eight gig DDR3. Uh, they have a 512 SSD and a bunch of other random stuff. All right, so what we're gonna focus on for this video is we're gonna upgrade the RAM and the SSD of our MacBook 2008, and hopefully it will run as fast, uh, if not faster than the MacBook Pro 2020, 13 inch. So here's the SSD and the RAM. These upgrades cost less than $100. I got them on Amazon. I can leave a link in the description, and honestly, for $100, these upgrades would change your life. 1010 would recommend. Okay, let's just take a moment to appreciate how magnificent this MacBook is. It's truly spectacular. All right, now into the internals. Let's flip it around. So right here, we have a little pool tab. Uh, back in the day, MacBooks were very easy to access. You literally just flip the pool tab and you have access to the hard drive and the battery. There are additional pool tabs right here on the battery and the hard drive. Uh, it's just super easy access. Okay, so there are eight screws to hold the back. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver and this screwdriver should be good for the whole uh, SSD and RAM upgrade. For simplicity, I'm just gonna speed through this and I'll get back to you guys when we're done. All right, and with this, we have access to the guts of our device. So again, Apple makes it so easy to take off the back and I really miss the upgradability that Apple once uh, used to cater to us. So you can see the hard drive, fan, motherboard, and the additional RAM. Beautiful. All right, so let's start with the hard drive first. As I mentioned, there's a little pull tab, but there's also one Phillips screw that you need to unlock before you can get into the hard drive. So let's just do that real quick here. Also, be sure not to lose all your screws. I kind of have them all over the place, but I mean, I know where they're at. So um, yeah, definitely don't lose your screws. You don't want to be in that situation. Here I'm taking a little while to do it just because um, I underestimated how long the screw was, but it's out. Okay, so pull tab is very important, but be careful not to pull it out all the way because there is a SATA 2.5 ribbon cable that's attached to the SSD or hard drive, and you'll need to pry that out first before you can remove the hard drive. It looks like we were successful. Okay, so now we're gonna put in our new SSD. Remember, it's a WD Blue 500 gigabytes. Just attach the SATA 2.5 inch uh, cable right here. It should fit exactly the same. Oh, I also forgot to note that there are four legs, as you can see those four screws right there, that uh, you would need to take from your hard drive and put onto your, uh, your new drive. I had already done this um, outside of the video, I apologize, but be aware that you need to put that in so it, the SSD would properly fit uh, into the chassis. So now that it's in, uh, we kind of want to put on the put back on the Phillips screw head right here, and after the screws in, then we are able to uh, move on to the next part of the video. Okay, now onto the RAM. So let's zoom in right here to the RAM. So each one, there are two slots. Each one is four, uh, up to four gigs, so eight gigs total. So there are two uh, kind of pin things right here. Just prop them open, and it should come right out. Be kind of careful, but I mean, you'll be safe. Um, the last one's kind of difficult just because the battery's in the way. 
um, you could take out the battery and then access to RAM. It would be much easier because it's not physically going to be there. But um, I mean, I didn't want to, so I kind of just like wiggle my way through it right here. And um, I mean, it, it'll it'll come out. It'll come out eventually. Oh, um, okay. And it's also important to note when you're installing the RAM, there's only one way that it can go in because there's a short side and a long side, as you can see. So there's no way that you can possibly put it in, quote unquote, the wrong way. So now that, now that we've taken off the RAM, we're just going to make sure that it goes in. There should be sort of an audible click when uh, it goes in and then go ahead and push it down. And we will do the same thing to the other one. And since this is on the top, it should be much, much easier. Very nice. All right. And click. Perfecto. Okay, and with that, the SSD and the RAM are upgraded. So let's just put back on the back. Remember, there are eight screws. I'm just going to speed through this part. I hope you guys don't mind. All right, and as we put on the last screw, it's gonna go in nice and tight. And then let's go ahead and put back on the back. Uh, I just just miss how easy it was for Apple to make these laptops so upgradable. And there you have it. Truly magnificent. All right, so let's boot it up and see what happens. A slight disclaimer. Um, after you install your SSD, the hard drive will be blank. So you actually have to format the disk and then install whatever OS you want to uh, obviously run your Mac on. I did this in another video um, and I'll probably link it up above. But yeah, you have to do that. It's, it's fairly easy. Uh, so this computer is going to be running Mac OS 10.11 uh, El Capitan. El Capitan is the last OS that this 2008 MacBook natively supports. So after a little while, we can see the SSD is uh, starting up. It's taking kind of a long time, but in the end, it is worth it because now we have a beautiful Mac OS running El Capitan. And with that, let's run some tests and see how this Mac performs in 2020. All right, so how does the keyboard perform? I did a speed test to see how many words a minute I could get, and honestly, I got pretty close to my max. Also, this keyboard is such a pleasure to write on. It has so much travel between the keys, and just listen to the sounds that the keyboard makes. And of course, we can't forget about the glass trackpad. Apple was probably one of the first to implement this sort of technology, having support for gestures and other features. It just made the trackpad very easy and the overall experience very easy to use. We're checking out the webcam on the Mac. Um, it looks pretty good, not too bad for 2008. Like obviously there's some pixelation. Um, it's a little bit grainy, but for the most part it does the job. Also using the internal microphone on the Mac as well. Um, it's not very good, but it does also get the job done. <laughs> All right, time to test the Bluetooth. Obviously, have to use AirPods because why not? Um, let's just click this button right here. Something should pop up. Yep, all right, and then we're just gonna click the pair button and that should be fine. Bluetooth works perfect. Okay, so let's test the CPU. We're using Cinebench 15 and um, wow, that took a while to, that took a while to start up. As you can see, the CPU is struggling pretty hard to do this. I mean, this laptop is running an Anto Core 2 Duo. It's not the strongest laptop, especially 12 years later. Unfortunately, in the laptop, like we can't upgrade the CPU or the GPU. So even though the RAM and SSD could theoretically like increase the performance of the overall laptop, when we isolate for the CPU, obviously this is very, very slow. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and speed forward to so you guys can see the results.
Okay, so a little bit over six minutes, and you guys can hear the fan has just been working the whole time. Obviously, CPU is not very good, and the uh, thermal system is not the best either. But now at least we're done. And as for the externals, there are a lot of nice-to-haves, such as this battery indicator that tells you the battery without even having to open the laptop. Just look at all the ports this device has, from Ethernet to Firewire to USB 3.0, Thunderbolt 2, headphone in, headphone out. What more could you honestly ask for? And lastly, MagSafe. So simple, but yet so effective, a revolutionary technology. Apple definitely needs to bring this back. Alright you guys, so here are my final thoughts. I mean, this device from 12 years ago, it's a pretty good value if you can get it for a deal. Um, I overall spent less than 100 bucks because I actually got this laptop for free. So I just upgraded the SSD and RAM, which costs less than $100. And honestly, this device runs flawlessly. It can run Microsoft Word, Google Docs, email, YouTube, Netflix, whatever, you name it. I found YouTube playback was pretty much limited to 1080p. It had a lot of trouble running 1440 or 4K, which is understandable because of the CPU and GPU bottleneck. This device is very old, but I believe still very capable. And all right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit that like button. And if you loved it, hit the like and subscribe button. And without further ado, I will see you guys next time.